Listen to this amazing dua of a great companion named Sa'd ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu. Sa'd ibn Ubadah is also a promised paradise and he was one of the Ansar among the early Muslims and he was a leader and a chief of one of the tribes of Medina. I, I haven't heard this dua from any other, narrated from any other companion. Listen to it. He said, Allahumma habli majdan wa la majda illa bi fi'al wa la fi'alin illa bi mal. اللهم لا يصلحني القليل ولا أصلح عليه أو ولا أصلح عليه أو ولا أصلح عليه. He says, O oh Allah, grant me honor and value. Grant me honor and value. And I cannot have honor and value without action and giving. And there cannot be any action and giving without financial resources. O oh Allah. Limited financial resources do not make me adequately functionable. They don't suit me. And I cannot adequately function without having abundance in wealth. It's very clear. Allah, I want honor and value. I cannot have it without action and giving. And I cannot act and give without you making me wealthy and rich. And not being rich doesn't suit me. I can't function like that. And if I am poor, it incapacitates me. I can't live like that. The hadith is in Al-Hakim, uh, narrated it, Ibn Abu Shayba, Ibn Sa'ad, and Al-Bayhaqi. And the hadith is authentic and very well known. And you know what? As a result of that dua, Sa'ad ibn Ubadah, radiallahu anhu, listen carefully. Al Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he migrated from Mecca to where? To Medina. How long did he spend in Medina? 10 years. So each year is 300, let's say 365 days. How many days would 10 years be? 365 times 10 years. Don't worry, I've already done the calculation. 3,650 3, days approximately. Do you know what Sa'd ibn Ubadah did as a result of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting him that wealth and that dua? He used to gift the Prophet peace be upon him a gift every day. Sometimes a shoulder of a lamb, sometimes a, a goat, sometimes something else. Every single day for 10 years, he gifted him 3,650 gifts. How? Because he was able financially. Now, if that's what he did for the Prophet Sallallahu imagine what he did for his people, for his family, for the Muslims, for the community, and abroad. Adding to that, you know the 10 promised paradise among the companions. There are more promised, but in that hadith there are 10. Did you know that seven out of those ten were extremely wealthy? Among them was Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu. We all have heard about Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, how wealthy and powerful he was. Did you know that scholars have estimated in today's US currency of how much approximately Abdul Rahman ibn Awf had in dinars compared to today's modern world? They estimated his wealth to be at least 800 million US dollars. That was his entire life uh, and wealth. He was worth 800 million US dollars in modern world. So was Uthman radiallahu anhu, Ibn Affan, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Umar radiallahu anhu, all of them. Ali radiallahu anhu started off poor. He started off poor. And he married Fatima radiallahu anha, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And they were extremely poor and it was very hard for them. He was quite young. And one day he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, I'm suffering from poverty. He waited and the man came in and gave some donations of a few dinars, or dirham, sorry. Dirham is less than a dinar. Dirham is uh, what, I don't know, maybe about $7 Australian. And Rasul Sallallahu received this, and what did he give Ali radiallahu He gave him one dirham, one. And he said, go to the market and buy yourself such and such dates or whatever, and then go and sell them for a profit of such and such. Then take that profit and bring it back to me. He went and did exactly as the Prophet ﷺ said. He came back with some profit. He said, now take it again and buy this or that. And sell it again and make some profit. And again and again until he had enough for his family to last him for a little while. And so Allah began a business of profit. So a Muslim invests, a Muslim profits, a Muslim gets into trade and business if they can, a Muslim educates themselves, a Muslim reads books about how to invest in business, a Muslim reads about the boundaries that Islam has placed in how to invest in a halal way, 
and what is haram, in how to earn your wealth in halal and what is haram, in how to spend it in halal and how to spend it in haram. A Muslim reads before they even earn money, what does this, you have to study, it is a, a, an ob obligation. <clears throat> Anything you're about to do in life, it is an obligation to study that area of your deen. Seek advice from scholars or read a book about it of is on Islam, from Islam, about that topic. So let's say finance. What is halal finance? What is haram? How do you spend it? What are your obligations? Who has to receive from your wealth? What is zakah? What is sadaqah? How much do you have to give? And so on. Then be wealthy as wealthy as you like. But don't forget Allah's right. Islam does not base your value on whether a person is rich or poor. Islam looks at your obedience to Allah, your worship, your conduct, and whether that wealth enters your heart and changes you becoming stingy, miserly, full of arrogance and pride, or whether poverty makes you a person who leaves the deen and blames Allah and so on and so forth. It's all a test. Wealth is a test. Poverty is a test. Everything in our life is a test. My beloved brothers and sisters, learn the dua of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and learn the dua of the prophets who made dua for halal risk, halal sustenance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. When you repeat these duas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of sustenance for you. But you have to be consistent and you have to be serious. You have to take things seriously and you have to take action. You have to work hard continuously. You have to make dua. Then Allah will give you halal risk. Allah will make risk easy for you. Allah will give barakah in your life. Don't just waste your time. Educate yourself. Learn about halal sustenance and invest and try to do as much hard work needed and try to learn new skills and every day take action. And continuously ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors of opportunities for you, to open the doors of sustenance for you. And together with that, always repent to Allah, cry to Allah, beg to Allah, ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely give you. Allah wants you to be successful. Allah wants you to be happy. Allah wants you to have halal sustenance. Because if you want to fulfill the five pillars of Islam, from them, two of them, like going to Hajj and giving zakat, is directly connected with wealth. If you don't have wealth, you cannot do these things. So ask Allah for wealth and don't be stingy. Be generous. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, make Allah happy with the wealth He gives you. Don't displease Him. Please Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continuously give you and Allah will make you happy. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.